Alright folks, welcome to the channel Skins for Life, where even the hat bleeds breaking in gold. Now, I'm going to take a break from football, and I'm going to just focus on basketball for a short minute or two. And I just want to focus on uh, how player control is a huge influence in a person playing a game. Now, the player that I'm going to set up is from NBA 2K11. I have, I'm controlling the Washington Wizards, and at the moment, Jordan Crawford has the ball. And he has a forward on him, which is a mismatch. Forward, center, whoever's guarding him is obviously a mismatch. I can see that. But I'm already thinking several moves ahead. So, first, I want to get him up with the punt fake, in which um, it's going to happen. And then the next move happens because the defense collapses from the right. So, I'm trying to get left. So I happen to throw the L half circle from right to left so he can go behind his back. And then by keeping my finger on the turbo, flick the R but the R analog stick up so I can throw a one-handed dunk. And it winds up being a poster type dunk because Omeka Okafor, Omeka Okafor, my fault, tried to jump. Now I kind of have to throw this in on LeBron, but I think Jordan Crawford had a flashback of dunking on him in a co in a in a camp while Jordan Crawford was in college. So that's what that dunk kind of reminded me of. But basically, it's all about player control. That's why a lot of people buy the games because they want to be control of their players, and the players have to respond appropriately. So the clip that you just saw definitely embodies that communication between the player and the uh, ball handler that you control. So that was like I said that was my short moment about player control. And I'm out this bitch. Peace.